Hey, what's going on everyone? Hawks21 here, back with another Splinterlands video. So I've had a lot of market content recently, but I've been making a lot of moves, so I just want to um, you know, be transparent with you guys and give you some insight into some of the stuff I'm doing. Um, and today, specifically, I want to talk about two cards in Chaos Legion that I purchased that I think are severely overlooked and specifically fit in really well with my deck. But before I get into the two cards specifically, I just want to show you sort of how I typically play and think about cards I'm going to sell and how I utilize the market. So I want to show you one sale here. Um, I sold 10 BCX of Thunderbird for a little under uh, $15 per BCX. I know this says, um, you know, 20, level 4 at 20, but that's because um, Watera, Wateria, sorry. Um, actually combined it and this is a glitch. So I sold 10 of them for $15 per BCX. And if we go to peak monsters, right? So I basically set up the modern. There's going to be some old reward stuff in here, but this is very close to the modern. And you scroll down to the very bottom. So I sold it at a little under 15 per BCX. It's down to about 13 per BCX. So it seems like that was a good sale at the time. Um, but how I think about it, oh look, there's AO4 from our last video. Um, but how I think about this is, I was buying this card after General Sloan came out. It was about five, six dollars per BCX. And it is a fantastic card, right? I added it at a level 10. I, want, I was thinking about getting it to a level four with the stun. Um, you know, that's what the person who purchased mine did. But, I had it at a level uh, 3, so it had the 2 General Sloan. It would be a 3 uh, archery card uh, for 3 mana with the flying, so great for Earthquake, and with 4 speed, so it was decently fast too. It's a fantastic card. But in general, how I like to play the market is sell cards that have appreciated a lot and put them into cards that like I don't think people recognize their value yet. And this was the case of that, right? Like everyone knows Thunderbird's a fantastic card. So when it ran up to $15 per BCX, I was like, well, you know, it's one of the more expensive epics at the moment. It's a very good card. I'm going to collect my DEC. I would love to buy back the Thunderbird, right? Like if I, if this falls down to seven, maybe even $8 per BCX, I'll clear up some capital so I can get it back. This is a fantastic card. I just felt at $15, you know, there are other cards with more upside and specifically I'm going to show you two really cheap relatively chaos cards that I utilize this capital, this DEC to max out from my Thunderbird. So we're going to come over here and the first one's a death card. And these cards specifically work well for me at Gold League given how I play, um, you know, the two decks that I talk about. So in death... I run a speed meta. I know a lot of guys run, you know, this low sort of weakening redemption death team. I don't run that team. Um, in particular, I don't have the curse slime ball um, with the redemption. And I don't have a lot of the weakened cards either. It's just not a team that I run. I run a fast death team. So like my main tanks, right, are nightmare, six speed with the phase. So the two summoners I run with Death are Thaddeus, which doesn't give any speed help, but um, you know it's it's a good enough team without any sort of speed buff um, directly from the summoner. And I run it with Kitty, so when I do run it with Kitty, and I have the mana to do that, and dragons available, we're already starting Nightmare at an eight speed, right? In lower mana matches, I'm using a Pelicor Deceiver, which doesn't have the phase, right? I'm more likely to try to use this one with Kitty, but it has the flying and it has backfire. So again, another card that plays into the speed meta. I use Riftwing a lot, another card that plays into the speed meta. Good speed, uh, flying, backfire again. Um, let's see, Lyra gives the speed boost, which is great. Another thing, so even with Thaddeus, right? Nightmare all of a sudden is at a seven speed. Not to mention, I'll usually drop in Supply Runner, right? 
That's another swiftness. So now we're talking eight speed nightmare when I'm not using the kitty. Playing with when I have the mana to play Lyra and Supply Runner. When I do play kitty, that's all of a sudden a 10 speed nightmare. Very fast. Same thing here, right? You're talking about six speed with Lyra and Supply Runner. Eight speed when I can play um, kitty. And same thing here, just gets exponentially faster. So what's a card that's really cheap in Chaos Legion that can help with my speed meta? And it's really cheap because its main ability is one that people have soured on, and that's recharge. It's not very expensive. Let me find it. It is the Insidious Warlock. So I just got to this to a level four which is Gold League. I could get it to level 5, but for the extra health, don't need that right now. I was mainly interested in the blind. So, until this card gets the blind, I, you know, don't really have interest in recharge um, monsters right now. But I think this one is particularly useful, right? So when you think about the lineups in death I'm running, it's about survivability. I'm not putting out lineups that do a ton of damage um, you know, I'm not going to kill you on the third or fourth turn. I think you're going to miss me a ton. I'm slowly going to whittle away at you. And a lot of times, right, it's when I run Kitty and Nightmare, I just win from the Nightmare outlasting in fatigue, right? You can't hit the Nightmare. Um, and the Kitty keeps healing it, assuming it doesn't get afflicted. And I'm just lasting for a really long time. So that takes away a lot of the disadvantage with the recharge, right? So if I'm talking about, you know, a match that goes, you know, 10 rounds, this is going to fire five times with the six damage. That's not insignificant, right? A lot of the problems with recharge, specifically with low mana recharge monsters, is some of those games go quickly. But with my death deck, the games don't go quickly. I'm strategically trying to prolong the games for my survivability to take over. And this card just plays into that. The blind, which adds a 15% miss chance uh, on every single attack. So not only am we talking about how much speed I have, right? The blind is just going to make it that much harder to hit. And one of the things people don't like right now, which is the recharge ability, is sort of mitigated by the fact that, you know, I... I I don't really care, right? Like the blind itself for five mana is useful to me. I wouldn't just use this if it just had blind, right? Like I could use other cards for that. Um, I also have the legendary. I also have the spirit hoarder, which has the blind for three mana, right? So, which has one attack and triage. Also a useful card that I would sometimes slip in here, but the damage output from the Insidious Warlock is not insubstantial, right? Six magic attack every other turn on top of the blind. You know, I've, I've found that it's a really great combination for what I like to run with death. And then when you go to peak monsters, you saw a lot of purchases there. Um, I'm going to go over some more of them in similar like type videos. If I just go to epics, right, it's the third cheapest epic card. So generally, this is what I try to do, right? I'm selling one of the more expensive epic cards, which is a way better card than the Insidious Warlock. But I would rather be buying these at 80 cents than sort of continuing to buy the Thunderbird at, you know, $15, $13 per BCX. So I think this is an overlooked card that as the speed meta sort of seems to be playing out in death, more and more people are going to want the blind. And, you know, the recharge ability is less of a negative here than it typically is. All right. Let's get to the second card that I purchased and I think is a bit overlooked. Now we're going to Legendary, still Chaos Legion, Dragon. And this specifically has to do with how I play. And that's the Void Dragon. This is... If not the cheapest, is it the cheapest Chaos Legion Legendary? No, I think there's a couple cheaper, but it's up there. Oh yeah, these re the recharge monsters as we just talked about. Um, you know, these ones are different, right? Because these are 
eight mana. So you're spending a ton of mana for recharge. And that's sort of their main ability, right? Like Ifrit Rising's main ability is the recharge, unless you're playing the top, which it gets force field. But you're buying this for the big recharge stacks. The Insidious Warlock, I'm buying it for the blind. In the six, every other turn is just an added bonus. Same with Zyvax Wool. Right, it has a little survivability with the flying and the, it can attack from the front, but this is an attack monster. It doesn't bring much else to the table. All right, back to Void Dragon. So yeah, it is uh, one, two, three. Wow, this card has really fallen off. Um, it is the fourth uh, least expensive. Uh, wow. So it is, where is Desert Dragons ticked up a bit? I re recently also just maxed this one out. Glad I did for gold. When I say maxed out, I mean gold. But Void Dragon, very cheap card. It's actually cheaper from where I bought it. I bought it at around six per. I think I just bought like five of them recently to max it out with the Thunderbird money. But when I play Dragon, my only Dragon Summoner is Kitty. So when I go Dragon, I'm going speed. And I originally overlooked Void Dragon because of the one attack, right? But I've slowly realized that it's just not an attack monster, right? For five mana, you're getting Void and Phase, right? So it's really great against magic. This is at the gold level. Let's pull this up. So it's really great against magic. Even here, right? Five mana. If you had some speed boosts with the flying, uh, the 25% dodge chance additional with flying, with the Void... This is a great card to toss out there when you're expecting magic, even without the face, right? So at lower levels, I think this card is overlooked. Just because it has the one magic, it brings a lot more to the table than just magic or than just attack. This is another card where its main thing isn't the attack. You get a diamond and champion, it gets the second attack, but I don't play there, so I'm not worried about that. The phase to me this in the gold puts this card over the top. I think this is an unbelievable... This is probably... I would say the most underrated gold and higher chaos card that exists right now. When I'm specifically running it with Kitty, right? So I'm talking about a seven speed monster with flying, void, and phase. It is the perfect secondary tank, right? So there are a lot of times where I'm running Desert Dragon or I'm running, where's the, oh, it's an epic. Or I'm running, where do you go? Oh, Jin Chihuahua, where both of these cards are pretty susceptible to magic, right? So putting the Void Dragon for only five mana with nine health and the speed in the phase in the second position is a really great hedge when I go all, out, all in on the Jin Chihuahua and the Desert Dragon, right? Because if I get a magic spam, I, I'm in a tough situation because they have zero resiliency to magic. They can't dodge it. It's going to undercut their shield. He can't retaliate. He's not going to be using thorns. It's a bad situation. But having the Void Dragon behind that sort of mitigates that and will give me a little bit more survivability. So for cards like Dragon Jumper and other cards at other Splinters, even Chaos Dragon in a really high mana match, if you know the other team melts Jinchuala or Desert Dragon, he'll buy me some more time, right? And it specifically works with Kitty, right? I, I think it's a less viable card if you're not going for speed or survivability. But if you look at other dragon cards, for example, but think about the Naga Brute. I don't have it fully leveled up, but it's not like it gets faster or any dodge. It's a slightly different type of card, but it's like a defensive type card, return fire, void, for five mana, right? So it's even more expensive with no attack. To me... You know, this card offers some of the same things the Naga Brute does, just in a different package. High hit points, doesn't have shield, but it has the void. And it's only five mana, right? It's cheaper and it's really fast. So yeah, I just think this is a really... Uh, this and the Insidious Warlock are two Chaos Legion cards that I think people don't like right now. But when you fast forward a month or two months down the road are going to be like very integral parts of people's strategy using dragon as well as using death. Um, you know, the Insidious Warlock is more gold and higher, just given, you know, my main use for it is the blind. But the Void Dragon, even at lower levels, I think is a very usable and, you know, even I would say powerful 
defensive type card. That's all I have for you today. I'm trying to churn out more market related videos. Um, you guys seem to like it. And it's part of the reason I got super interested into this game. So I love talking about it. Um, so it works out both ways. But yeah, that's all I have for you to, for today. I really appreciate you being here. If you uh, learned anything or just enjoyed the content, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Um, all right, that's it. Have a great day.